All right, guys, welcome back for another episode of Survivor Recap with yours truly, Big D, a.k.a. Derek F. on the Royalty Podcast Show. I am your host and the only host that is recapping Survivor 46 today. So, welcome. Let's get into it. I do want to let you guys know, I'm so sorry for missing last week. I was in Pittsburgh for the Survivor event. So, of course, if I don't do an episode, it's probably because I'm at a Survivor's event. So, this week, I will be recapping by myself. And then next week, I will have a guest. But, just to kind of go off of what we missed last week, um, if I'm correct, we had Mora. Uh, she ended up getting eliminated last week. It's a very, very hot tribal um, elimination that was happening. I felt like it was like really juicy because Venus uh, was like kind of threw everything in everybody's face last week, which was episode six. Like, if you guys want to get rid of me. You're basically pathetic. <laughs> uh, but let's get into last night's episode, okay? Starting off with Soda and Venus having a talk. They're kind of having a talk, but this talk is kind of like, like we see each other. It's very like, I feel like you're coming after me. I feel like you're coming after me. I feel like we don't trust each other. We don't trust each other. We need to be here. Like you could tell they don't trust each other and they want to take out, of, you know, take out each other. And it's been going on for a while. So at this point, it's like, we're talking, but we're like, ah, 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 bitch. Like, yeah, like they see each other, okay? They're coming for each other. Charles does tell Venus that he wrote her name down. Not surprised by that because they were kind of button heads last episode. So I wouldn't expect that. I'm surprised that he opened his mouth and said that. That just kind of says that he has too much on his head. He can't really keep a secret because... That wasn't a good call. I would never tell somebody I voted for you. You always lie. You lie, lie, lie. Unless you found out that you told somebody else and then they told your secret, you lie. Understand these competition shows, you should be lying. Now, Q being who Q is, I do want to tell you guys, I met Q and I met uh, Maria at the Pittsburgh event. Q is exactly how he is on TV. He is very competitive. He is very, like, straightforward. Maria is very sweet. Um, but I could definitely see how Q is going to shine a lot in this episode, which Q always shows uh, shows and shines throughout the episode every single time. Um, Q does go up to Charlie and is like, hey, man, like, you messed up the plan. Why would you go and, like, tell her that you voted for her? Because if we decide to vote her out, like, you know, we wanted to blame it on Soda. You know, and Q's, like, trying to be, like, Q's basically trying to be the captain of the ship, run this ship. And, you know, it kind of is going to play a little bit later in the episode. We cut to them sleeping. Ben has a panic attack. He had a bad dream. And Mackenzie's there to comfort him. This also shows in this moment of the game of, like, you know, which we don't see a lot of, like, people being, like, showing their heart. You know, when you're in this game and, you know, it's hard to uh, forget that you're human sometimes when you're in this game. Because you're always, like, cutthroat. You're like, cut everybody. Do what you need to do. Make it to the end. Who cares? But when you see somebody health at risk and you see them having a tough time, you kind of come back down to earth and you're like, I'm human. I need to make sure he's okay. And this is where Kenzie, one of her things that she said, she's a she's a she's a people's person. So this is like she has to say something. She has to help. Like anybody would. I would too. I and, and this can also help you in the game because this person's never gonna forget how you helped them in that moment and didn't throw them underneath the bus. Now, just so you guys know, we are at day 14. The way it works with this, it's one of the old school games that we have seen before. I don't know what to really call it. I want to call it like a side boat balance beam. I guess that's what we'll call it. The way Jeff said, Jeff made it clear there's going to be a double elimination tonight. And they're going to be split up into two groups. The first group will, if they win, they will be able to go to tribal second, which means Anybody that makes it past that tribal is automatically going into jury. And then this, the the, first, the the tribe that loses first uh, will have to go to tribal first. None of them have really guaranteed jury any of them can go home. There is going to be two eliminations. While they're up there, let me kind of go over what the groups were. The first group, Ben, Tim, Tiffany, Hunter, and McKenzie. Okay. The second group was Tevin, Soda, Venus, um, Mariah, and Charlie. 
Q decides, because you know, Q is Q in this game. Q decides that he's like, hey, y'all want to play a game? Let's play the alphabet game. Everybody's like, what the what the hell is the alphabet game? So he makes it clear that like you gotta say the first letter and then a city. So it starts with Q and then it goes to Hunter and then Q's like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's not how you gotta do it. You gotta do it this way. I don't know who is making Q like the captain of all this like rules and regulations, but I would have told Q, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay, I'd be like, shut up, this is too much. But of course, you know, Charlie's messing with Q and he gets it wrong on purpose just because he wants to show, hey, um, I- I- I'm not really playing your game. I'm just here to mess around at this point. It's, it's a very intense type of competition. Next to you notice, like, Jeff is like, hey, you got to move down to the next plague on the sides because there's little plagues that you put your feet and they're kind of like this. And as it goes, it gets harder and harder. You're like down to one toe at some point. Kenzie, the first group goes out, but Kenzie's the last to drop, which means she wins. But that whole entire group does not get a reward and they have to go to tribal council first. And the second group, it comes down to, which I found very interesting, Tevin and Mariah. And Tevin did this impressive, like, catch and try to not make himself fall. They're also standing on one leg at this point. Like, Jeff got them up there looking like Simone, uh, Simone Biles, trying to do these gymnastic movements. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Mariah wins. So, shout out to both of the women winning this competition as Mariah and Mackenzie. So, Mariah's group will be going second to tribal. We kind of cut back to the first tribe. Now, keep in mind, guys, in case we missed this and we didn't go over this, there is an alliance of six. I like to call it the cookout method because it is what it is because it is. There's a, a group of six and it's Tim, Mariah, Q, Tiffany, Hunter, and Tevin. The main group is supposed to be Hunter, Q, and... um. Tim working together and then they're plus ones. So we cut to the first tribe and um, the first tribe who got eliminated. Tim has a conversation with Q and wants to go after Hunter. Um, I understand where he's going and they kind of have like a, I mean, I know what that debate's like. Like when you have it, like they're really debating back and forth. Like why would we do that? Q's also questioning like, Tim, why would you want to throw your alliance underneath the bus? Like he's kind of questioning him. But Tim's also thinking like, I don't want to play your game, Q. And I can't, I can't knock Tim because Tim's like, I, Q, I see you trying to run the show. I want to do this. This is what we should do. And you know, when Q comes up with a plan, that's it. That's the plan that everybody, he tries to tell everybody to do. Tim is like, we got to go after the hunter. This is perfect timing. Why would we not go after a hunter? Because Tim, in the back of his mind, is also like, I want to keep my tribe, Siga, or number strong and take out another, uh, take out a Nami tribe because he lost a member last week. He's like, I don't want to lose another member. And then Q is kind of like, I see what you're doing here. You're trying to keep your tribe number strong. And then you have the alliance. And then you have this. He's trying to set himself up for you know, making it far in the game, which I can't knock Tim for doing because that's what you want to do. I I understand that. Like, I made sure I had my main alliance, but I also had other alliances just in case I need to get a parachute and jump at any point to make sure I'm good to make it in this game. Before I go too far, there was a point in the game <laughs> that Tim said, what up, Jeff? And Q said, and Jeff's like, what up? I mean, we're playing the game. Jeff's like, we're playing the game. Like, what do you, what do you mean, what's up? What's going on? Did I miss something? What are you talking about? What's up? And Q's like, nah, Jeff, that means, like, what time it is. It's black people turn. Jeff's like, I guess I learned something new. <laughs> the fact that they're teaching Jeff, like, just the black lingo and how we talk, you could definitely tell, like, the uh, I, I, which I love seeing the the reality shows like Big Brother and CBS, and also I hope Amazing Race too is now showing more of the POC side of things and how we talk and our lingo and things like that because that was just such like a great moment to me. But I'm also like, uh, as we used to say in the Big Brother house, 
to each other. Y'all players are getting too damn comfortable, okay? Y'all getting way too comfortable, all right? But I found that to be funny. Um, and the black people were talking tonight. I will tell you that. They were definitely talking, talking up a damn storm. I want to cut to the other tribe. They had their, their dinner. I mean, their, their, their food, their reward. They go back to tribe. I mean, go back to their... Um, what do you want to call it? Camp. They go back to their camp. And Charlie is feeling like, oh my God, like Maria's safe. I'm the only one out of Siga. They're all going to team up and take me out. He's like, there's no hope. He's trying to do eye contact. He's like, I don't know. I guess he's trying to get blank stares by Taylor Swift. Okay. Like, Okay, Soda has a conversation with Charlie, and she's and she's like, "Hey, Venus gotta go," and Charlie's kind of like, "Oh, this is great! Like, Venus has to go. This is this is wonderful. I'm gonna have a conversation with Maria." But then Tevin also has a conversation with Charlie and lets him know, at this point, I'm cool with Venus going, but I really want Soda out because Soda is a big, big threat. She's a social threat. People like her. They're into her. He knows if he doesn't get Soda out, Soda is gonna be a problem problem for his game later on in this game to get out and he needs to be the only person here that's more of the communicating with everybody because soda can convince people to do things he sees her as a threat and sees it all the way of her making it to the end so he tells charlie that so charlie's like wow i got so many options i got soda i got i got venus i don't know what to do so then venus is also trying to find a way out of this too so venus decides to go have a conversation with um maria and she has a conversation with maria just trying to see if they're willing to work together but you know venus approach can be uh, very direct, which is fine. And some people might find that aggressive. You know, there's all different type of players in this game of Survivor and also all type of, uh, type of players in the competitive world of challenge, traitors, big brother, amazing race, Survivor, all that. So when you look at these shows, you're kind of like, hmm... Yeah, so when you see people that come different approaches, it depends on how you speak. Now, no matter what, Venus doesn't know that Maria's in an alliance with Tevin. So Venus comes over and she's like, we need to get rid of Tevin. And Maria's like, oh, do we? So then Maria's already on defense mode. So it's kind of like a... It kind of sucks because I know Venus is like, this is great. Like, she knows none of these people. She thinks nobody's working with each other. But it's kind of like she kind of shot herself a little bit in the mouth because it's like, damn... They're working together. And Maria's like, we're definitely not getting rid of Tevin for sure. Maria does call out Venus when she's having a conversation with her, Venus, and Charlie. And she's like, you know, I felt like you didn't give me a, a, a voice. You made me feel very like I had to go the route that you wanted to go. And then Venus is like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? She just doesn't get her delivery could be a little bit strong. And then on top of that, like they're working together. So there's not really you can do. So that's why I always try to tell people when you're in this game of when you're playing these competition shows, you have to kind of, what's the word? You got to kind of finesse what you want to do. You got to kind of be like, instead of being like, hey, I want to go after Tevin. She could have been like, what do you guys think? What's the best play? Like, I'm open. To, like, you got to kind of kiss people's ass and then be like, you know, I, I am on a tribe with two members. It, you know, I really would like, you know, whatever you guys think is best. I don't want to go home. But, you know, I'm okay if it's Tevin, you know, uh, Soda. Um, they're both a threat to my game, and I feel like they'll be a threat to your game. But it's the way you deliver things. You saw I delivered that. And then when you, you see them like, hmm, interesting, I don't know. Then you can sit there and say, how do you feel about, um, you know, Tevin? What do you think? You got to deliver in a soft way. It's just how it is. You got to be fake. That's how it is. And no one's saying like, oh, being fake, you're not being yourself. You are being yourself. Cut back to the other tribe. <laughs> Tim talks to Tiffany and Q about Hunter. They're kind of like, why are we getting rid of Hunter? But also, it's like, it feels like they're kind of like, no, and then yes. And it seems like it's going to be between Ben and Hunter from the Sigur tribe. Q is barking orders at the Yangyu tribe, his purple tribe, which is Tiffany and Kenzie. He's like, we're doing this. But Q's like, one minute, we're doing this. Q's like, we're doing this. Like, Q changes his mind every time when it comes to a vote. I would be like, I don't know where I'm voting 
But I got to vote with my heart because this dude keep changing every five minutes. But the way that he's delivering these votes to, like, the way he's delivering his, de his demands to the people on his team, it does come off very, like, okay, like, you're not barking the orders. Like, you're not running the show here. And... It was just so funny because Kenzie at one point is like, I wouldn't be surprised if Q came back here and said, vote me out. <laughs> Knowing how Q is, that's the type of stuff that he would do. So I don't blame her for saying that. But he can't be barking orders at the women in his tribe thinking that he's calling the shots. And he thinks that he's calling the shots. And I have to say, I can't get mad at Q because he is playing a good game. But the downfall is if he does not work well with his two members of Yanyu, they're going to be his downfall because they're going to cut him. We cut to the first tribe. Now, the first tribe that has to go in is basically almost all the men. So, it's going to be Ben, Q, Tim, Hunter, and then Tiffany and uh, Mackenzie. Okay? Um, I still don't know where these votes are going to go. Felt like it was going to be... Because the way they were kind of talking, and they always do that when we're watching this show. I thought it could have been Q for a second, the way that Kenzie and uh, Tiffany were talking. Ben does have an emotional moment. He talks about how, like, you know, Kenzie being there for him when he was having that moment and being a human and made him really, like, touch his soul. He gets a little bit of emotional. Kenzie's like, yeah, that's what I do. Like, you know, I love people. I work, you know, in a field where I'm always connecting with people. Ben has that moment. Then Jeff goes into his famous questions. Q, what do you think? And Q's like making it clear that, you know, we got to get rid of somebody to keep the tribe numbers the same and things like that. And Hunter's also like confused because Hunter is like, I, I know I'm on the chopping block, but I got an idol. I don't know if I should play the idol. He don't know what to do. But when I'm watching this tribal council, I was so glad that Q did clean up his mess by 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 sitting there and saying how Kenzie, because Kenzie has a moment like, I'm so sad. Like, I don't want to give it to any of these boys. Like, all these boys helped me get to where I'm at now today. We won last week. You know, now I got to vote one of them out. Like, this is horrible. And she's just kind of like, at this moment, like, I know, <laughs> I know I have to give it to one of these people. And it's so sad. And I appreciate everything they do. And, you know, Q gives Kenzie a moment and says, hey, she did great. She kicked all our asses today. Really praises her. And I think that helped a lot with how he was acting before to kind of show Kenzie, like, I got you, girl, which was smart. I'm glad that he did that. Tim comes out. He's like, I'm swinging at Hunter. I'm making it clear that Hunter has won all these games. Hunter's going to do everything. He's going to blow through this competition. We have to get rid of Hunter. We got to get rid of Hunter right now. Hunter's like, oh, I mean, we can give it to you too. So they're going back and forth. And when it's time for tribal council, guys, Tim goes home. Tim does go out by saying, you know, in his green screen or his after moment, whatever, he said, I played this game, uh, I played this game not listening to anyone telling me what to do, which I think was shade toward uh, Q. Uh, which I understand that because when you stand ten, you know, stand on your toes, you really want to stand on your toes. It's hard when you got two people trying to call shots, which I know what that feels like. <laughs> when you got two people trying to call shots in your alliance and then, you know, you butt heads. That's what happens. Now we're cutting to the other tribe. The other tribe, as I mentioned before, and I'll go over it again, I've had Tevin, Soda, Venus, Mariah, uh, and Charlie onto the tribe. Going into this, before I cut to this, Charlie does say in one of his green screen moments, he, and he also tells Maria, I'm voting however you vote. You're my number one. You're who I trust. I'm voting however you want to vote. I don't know where they're going to go once again. Um, I'm thinking it could be Venus. Uh, I'm also thinking it could be Tevin because of just how Venus was trying to target Tevin. So does trying to target Venus. They're all over to each other. They're trying to target each other. Venus wanted to go after Tevin. Soda wanted to go after Venus. And um, Tevin wanted to go after Soda. I will say in this tribe, they did point out some things, but it wasn't really too, too juicy. Um, besides the fact that you know, Soda was thinking, like, everything's going to go on Venus. And once we get to the votes, it ends up being uh, Soda going home. And Soda was blindsided. And she was also devastated, but she also took it with the with the hit on the chin. And I appreciate that. I will say that Soda looked at Venus and was like, you did this? And Venus is like, yeah. Which I was pretty surprised because Tevin should have took credit for that. Because 
If she's the first member of the jury, which Soda is the first member of the jury, you want her to know what moves you made. He should have stood up and said, no, I actually made this plan happen. That's what he should have done. Or you should have said, can you give me a hug and then tell her in her ear or something. But to just let Venus take the credit, I can't knock it. Venus is taking the credit and it's setting her up to look like she's going to win this damn season. Like if she makes it to the end, her resume is looking pretty good compared to everybody else. That's our Survivor recap. I will say after watching this episode, the people that are really standing out to me is definitely Q. Uh, definitely Soda, uh, Tevin, of course, um, and Charlie, it sounds like in the episode, as I learned, guys, it sounds like Charlie wants to go after Q. You know, of course, I don't hope that. I need the Swifty to get out of here. I think that it was very interesting to see how this played out. It was a double elimination. You know, that always sucks when there's a double elimination. I am excited for next week. Tell you the truth, right now, I am pushing for Yan Yu. Of course, I miss on you i'm happy i'm happy that yang yu is still together and they kind of are controlling this game as long as they keep playing it smart i'd love to hear your guys's feedback on last night's episode i think i'm a survivor um you know this is very interesting uh you know i'm a little bit late into getting to the survivor game you know i didn't start recapping or really getting into survivor until really after my season of big brother so i'm only three years into it i love that the idols are not easy to find i like the competition base i wish that sometimes we can get some of these competitions over to big brother um because i feel like they have a little bit more physical competitions they even wrestle and fight each other like that's what i wish we could do on big brother with survivor um it's really good to see how this all plays out um Q is just made for TV because he's just him. You guys, keep in mind, uh, I'm still on the Survivor Tour. So um, in two weeks, I will be in Chicago with the Bryson Wynn Presents uh, Tour. So you guys will be my first time in Chicago. I'm so excited. I'm there for a whole week. I'm driving from Philly. Uh, also, guys, I'm going to Detroit for one night. Um, so on my way up to Chicago, I'm stopping in Detroit to see our queen herself, Tiffany, since she says I never come to her house. I think, yeah, I'm filming a podcast while I'm there. It'll be very interesting to see what podcast I film. You guys will see um, while I'm in Detroit. And then uh, I'm in Chicago. And then keep in mind, guys, I'll be going to Boston. And then there'll be Philly. And then we'll wrap it up in New York. So um, I hope to see any of you guys that are Survivor fans, Big Brother fans. Please check out Bryce and Wendell's uh, Instagram pages. They do have a Bryce and Wendell Presents uh, where you guys can buy tickets and come to the events. But I would love to hear your guys' recap on tonight's episode. Until next week, guys, remember, next week um, we will be here. I will have the normal time as usual. Um, and I will have a special guest from Survivor, of course. Uh, but until then, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. You can listen to this episode on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Spotify, any of the streaming services that you listen to your podcasts at, or you can watch us on YouTube. So guys, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And we love you. Bye, Royal Court. Bye.